different, and we're not starting with games, but we're con we're starting with worship. So I encourage, no, I want all of you to come here right now so we can start worship.
you all for letting us be here today and letting us gather. Um, I pray for next sermon, that it goes well, and that we all learn something from it, and that we all go home with our hearts not hardened, and that we'd rather go with it softened. I hope that Team Rush goes well, and that everybody is participant and has a lot of fun. And in your name I pray, amen. What is uplifted you? Oh, come on now. What's up, guys? I need a little bit more than that, man. What is uplifted youth? Guys, today I'm excited. If you didn't notice, things are a little bit different. Uh, you'll see to the right and to the left, there's a bunch of tables kind of decked out. Right? You'll see that we didn't even play games today. In fact, we skipped right from games to worship. It's because today we are having what's called Team Rush. Team Rush. If you don't know what Team Rush is, it's okay. You guys can go back to high school. Club Rush is literally the exact same thing. Uh, and we took this idea from the school. What it would be like to, to look at our ministries as if they were kind of like a Club Rush. So today, later today, you'll have the opportunity to kind of figure out a little bit more about what ministries we have to offer here at the church. And you'll have an opportunity to either join or get more information about them. I think it's such a beautiful, beautiful aspect to be able to join teams, to be able to worship God through our actions. Today, really what we're going to do is we're going to break down these teams and we're going to figure out why even have them. And what's the purpose for joining a team? Why even be a part of a team? Amongst many others, I'm going to just go ahead and, and lay this out here. We have a ton of different teams that we are a part of today. Uh, these are just a small representation of, of really what the youth is involved the most. Amongst that, we have tons of other ministries that the church does that you guys can be a part of, whether it's through visitation or missions. Uh, but these, the ones that I'm going to represent or representing here today, these are like the most that the youth group is involved in, and if that makes any sense. Mostly, those are going to be worship. Those are going to be drama teams. Those are going to be creative for some pressions, production. These are really the lifeblood of a youth service. And today, I'm really just going to be bouncing between scriptures. I'm going to really be sticking with uh, Ephesians 4, but I'm also going to be going into 1 Corinthians. And we'll see that they're both kind of written by Paul, and it's going to have an outlook of why even bother joining teams. That being said, before I even start, if you have your notebooks, Bibles, and pens, whip them out. Make sure to take notes. Make sure to, to jot things down. I promise you will leave more informed. That being said, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. It says this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bonds of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one hope, when you were called. Verse 5, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ anointed it, appropriated it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? 
who he who descended to the very one is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son, our God, and become mature, obtaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for everything that you do. And I just pray over this service, what happens after the service, Lord, that, that you really touch our hearts, you speak to our hearts. You show us the reason, the value, the understanding of why we should give back, why we should serve, why we should get plugged in. Lord, I thank you for everything you do, and I pray that you just speak through me. And Lord, that these words might pierce the hearts of those listening, whether they're online or in person, Father. I thank you for everything you do. In your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, before I even start, can we all agree that working in teams is difficult? I, I feel like it really is difficult for so many different factors, but working in teams is extremely difficult. When I think teams, by the way, I don't think of ministry. I know that sounds bad. What I think is, is sports. Like, I truly believe in sports. I believe, uh, when I think of teams, I look at all the sports I used to play as a kid, whether that's baseball or whether, whether that was flag football. Truly, I look at those, but the one sport I was awful at was basketball. Dude, I suck. Like, I'm, I was bad. Like, I don't know what it was. It might have been my height, because <laughs> your boy's short. Or it might have been, like, the fact that I have no idea to this day, like, what the rules are. There's only two rules. I was joking about this one of the youth guys the other day. I was like, I only know two rules. One of them is like double dribble, because I used to get called on that all the time, and like traveling, because I used to get called on that all the time as a kid, too. Like, other than that, oh, and I found another one. When it hoops up, it's like goaltending if you smack it down. Other than that, dude, I am absolutely clueless. As a kid, I was absolutely clueless. I had no idea about the rules of basketball, and truly, honestly, I don't, I don't think I ever cared. Like, like, basketball to me wasn't a sport that I desired to play or, or I looked at and I was like, man, I desperately want to join those teams. Like, I, I want to be a high school basketball player. I know there's a few of you guys who, like, love basketball, right? That was not my sport at all. Like, at all. Truthfully, I was more into drawing, right? Like, I, I, I spent my time in the art classrooms, like drawing, get, getting better at shading, understanding like, like what it was to capture the essence of, of an, an orange in the right light. Like that was me. I don't know about you guys, but me, I grew up realizing that I, I enjoyed ba baseball. I, like I enjoyed hockey. I enjoyed football. But I was like a one-man team. Like I, I just, I realized that for me, all I wanted to do was go to my art classrooms and draw. Because I didn't have to rely on anybody. It was just me my skill set, what I enjoyed. Later in life, I started realizing that I would only gravitate towards sports that were a one-man team. Chess. Dude, I love chess. Really, like, nobody loves chess. I love chess. Right? right? Race car, like, whether it's NASCAR or Formula One, I love these sports because it's really, like, you look at it and you're like, it's a one-man team. Right? After a while, though, you start to realize that that is lonely. Like, you start to realize that, that, that there are, are so many issues with that concept. The truth was, I just never wanted to face why it was so hard for me to be accepted in the team. Why? That being said, I'm going to give you seven real-world main obstacles towards teamwork. These are things that I guarantee you, even in high school or in middle school or when you graduate and have, go off to college, these are going to be seven obstacles that you will face no matter what in the world. And I'm going to read them off really quickly. The first main obstacle that hinders teamwork is a disconnect from the purpose. Not understanding why you are doing the things you do. Another one is going to be unclear roles. You have no idea what you're supposed to do. Number three is it's a lack of trust. You can't trust the rest of your team. Number four, having different capabilities or personalities. Not truly being able to understand like, like 
what they're capable of is not the exact same thing as like what you're capable of. Number five, it's a lack of vision. You don't understand where that team can go. You don't understand how far you can go with that team. Number six, and we all suffer from this one, low self-esteem. I am not capable of joining this team because A. What about poor communication? Poor communication. Not being able to truly communicate with that person of where you're supposed to be going or what they're supposed to be doing. And the biggest one, number eight, I'm sorry, there are eight, I said seven, unresolved conflict. Unresolved conflict. See, when I was a kid playing basketball, you know, in middle school, you had to play. It wasn't an option. Like, you either played these sports and joined a team for that, like that, that whole season, or you have to run laps like a mile every single day at PE. And what's crazy is that when I was a kid, you got to pick teams. I was always the last person. Always. It doesn't matter. What, like, when they looked at me, they were like, yo, it's that kid again. I'm not going to pick him. Like, like, truth be told, I was, I was chosen after all the girls. Like, the girls were chosen. I'm still here like, are you going <laughs> to? I mean, I'm not that bad. Come on, man. Like, I just want to learn. The, the sad part is that when I was trying to join this team, there were so many things that hindered me from growing. Out of those seven, I can name five of them. For one, I didn't understand the purpose of playing basketball. I did not have any fun doing it. It was not like, like baseball, I had fun doing it. Soccer, I had fun doing it. Football, I had fun doing it. Basketball, I was like, what's the point? Like, like truly, like, like I'm just going to, yeah, this, this is what, like, I didn't understand the purpose. More than that, I didn't even understand the roles. Like, like in soccer, we have, you have a forward, you have midfield, you have defensive, you have your goalie. When I looked at basketball, I was like, they're just running around. <laughs> they're chasing a ball. What are they doing? Like, is somebody supposed to be a shooter? Is somebody supposed to, like, like, where's your goalie, guys? Like, wh what's going on? I didn't even understand the very roles on how to play it. Right? Uh, there was a lack of trust. They would look at me and immediately be like, dude, I do not trust uh, him to, to score a point for the life of me. And probably because I kind of, like, did that, it wasn't good. Guys, it wasn't good. Like, like truly, as a kid, I looked at basketball, like, it was this awful, awful sport that hated me. And because I looked at it like that, I oftentimes had a low self-esteem. Every year that it was basketball season, I would look at it, and at one point I remember one year, I was like, you know what, I'd rather run a mile every single day. I'd rather run a mile than have to be subjugated to like this humiliation of like, bro, you're picking the kid who can't shoot. And it got to a point where in me, I just, I didn't care for it. And the worst part was that I never had somebody to even teach me. I never had somebody that would, that would sit there and communicate the rules or the purpose of this game. I would sit there wondering, like, what is, what is going on? And even amongst my friends, what would end up happening is because we would have to play basketball, I remember getting into a lot of fights with them. Because all I would ever want is like, yo, just teach me. No, 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 you're not worth teaching. And this is a true, realistic aspect. It's funny because just yesterday I was at a heat game, sitting with my wife, and she was like, what are they doing? I was like, bro, honestly, I have no idea. Like, let's just watch them. Like, like I, I, there's no, th there was no reason for me to even be at that game, other than the fact that I found out we lost. I don't know if we suck or not, but yesterday we did. L like, for me, that game... There was no teamwork, period, in my life. Period. And as I look through scripture, I realized one thing. That teamwork is the only way to do ministry. And, and in scripture, it's tackling all of these examples just in the verses that we just read. Let me show you. It says this in Ephesians 4, chapter 1. Ephesians 4, chapter 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Let me stop right there. Before we even get into teamwork, can I just say this? All of you have a calling. Like, whether you realize it or not, all of you have been called by God to do something amazing in his name. 
And all you ever had to do is receive that relationship to understand that calling. So many of us, we will sit here and, and, and try to figure out, well, like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do with my life? Oh my gosh, like, I want to be this, but I want to be that, and I want to be this, and I want to be that. But God is sitting here saying, I already gave you a calling. I already told you what you need to do in life. All you have to do is listen. And it continues with this. Number two, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Do we remember that list I sent you, right? Like unclear roles, like we don't know what to do. Well, Scripture's sitting right there and saying, hey, before you do anything, learn to be a servant leader. Before you do everything, like look at every aspect in life and be humble, gentle, be patient, bearing one another in love. Have humility. Which means if somebody sits there and says, hey, I need you to do this, it isn't a, no, no, no I'm not going to do that. Why would I do that for the team? Of course I'll do that. Oh, you want me to be the water boy? I'll be the water boy. Let's do it. Not this, oh, you want me to be the water boy, but bro, I, I shoot buckets, dog. Like, I, I, that's all I do. It's a humility, a human aspect that we can sit there and, and subjugate ourselves to be servants towards everybody else. To be servants. Verse 3, it says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the peace, or the bond of peace. Remember that list? What about unreserved conflicts? Are we doing our best to join in teams, despite the fact that we might have a conflict with somebody else? Like, the truth, truth be told, I don't agree with everything my entire team believes. There are certain areas where I'm like, I don't, I don't, that's not, that's not me. But that shouldn't stop us from becoming a part of the team. That shouldn't stop us from joining in on the vision, the kingdom of God vision. We will sit there and say, man, just because I have a, a conflict with this person, I therefore don't even trust them. The truth is, according to the scripture, you don't need to trust them. You don't need to be unified with them. You need to be united in the spirit. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Truth is, if you have the Holy Spirit residing in you, if you have the Holy Spirit residing in you and you are in tune, it doesn't matter whether you have conflict with somebody else, you will resolve that conflict. You will be able to trust that person. Because it's not about you, it's about the kingdom of God. It has nothing to do about what your works can give, but everything about what you can do for the Lord by serving for the Lord. Verse 4. There's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. Dude, can I say that we all have different capabilities, but we're all one body? Like, Catherine, can I sing? Be I think I can. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, can I sing? Can I sing? You, be honest about it. Can I sing? I cannot sing. Yes, yes. Let me ask you a question, though. Can I do photography? Yeah, I'm just like, okay, cool. <laughs> Can I, am I able to do photography? Do I have that gift? Do I have that skill set? Truth is, I don't need to be the person that sings. I don't even need to be the person that goes ahead and gets a camera in my hand. I can just be the guy that's up here giving you the word. We are so many different types of people with so many different gifts. And the truth is, as long as we are able to unify under one banner, which is Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how many different capabilities or gifts that we have. As long as we give them upon God. As long as we recognize that, that we are all one body. We're here to glorify God and only God. Verse 5. Actually, verse 6. 
sorry, verse 7. But to each one of us, grace has given, has been given as Christ anointed it. Back to that list, low self-esteem. How can you truly have low self-esteem if you recognize that God has died on the cross for you? Like, can that sink in for a second? Like, like if Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, that means he has value over your life. He sees value in you. So who gives you the right to say that you are not good enough when God says you are? Like, like truth be told, we are sitting here and, and we're so hard on ourselves sometimes. I could never join creative. I could never sing. I could never be on stage. But how are you going to say that when God says that you can? God puts the value in your life, not you or others. Man, it, truth be, it doesn't matter if the entire basketball team looked at me and, and were like, dude, you suck. I just, didn't ha- I just had a different purpose. I had a different skill set. I still had value. And God saw that in day one. Verse 8, this is why when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gifts and gave gifts to all of his people. What does he ascend and mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? It's talking about God descending down to die for us. So that way he might ascend and he might bring us up to ascend with him. That we might have heaven. That we might be able to worship alongside him or worship him, period. He who descended in the very one is the very one who ascended higher than all of the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Verse 11, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for work of service so the body of Christ may be built up. Bro, if you have, if you have your Bibles, if you guys are taking notes, I want you to highlight that. Here's the truth. Oftentimes, we will not join teams. We will not do something because we don't understand the purpose We don't understand the why. Why would I ever do that? I'm so disconnected from the purpose. Why would I sit there and wave a little sign around? Why would I pick up a camera and take pictures for the church? Why would I do anything? But see, here in verse 11 and 12, it says that Christ gave us these gifts. That not only did he give us these gifts, but he gave it for a reason. He gave them to equip his people for works of service. For works of service. So that the body of Christ may be built up. The only reason why you have the gifts is to build the kingdom of God. It does not matter about what you desire. But rather, it's really an extension of how am I going to glorify God with these gifts? How am I going to add to the kingdom of God? And look, verse 13, here's the vision. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, maintaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We are going to use our gifts until the day that we die. And we're going to use the gifts until the day we die to glorify God. That is the purpose. The purpose is to add to the kingdom, not take it away. I'm going to tell you this right now. By not joining teams, you're taking away from God. By not serving God, you're taking away from God. See, God gave you this gift. He gave you this passion. He gave you that vision. He gave you the ability to serve him. But sometimes we will grab all of these gifts and we'll use it for ourselves. And instead of honoring and giving towards God, we're taking that away and giving towards ourselves. We are so ego-stricken sometimes where it's all about me. It's about my world. It's about my social media, my boyfriend, my skills, my job, my future. What about the kingdom of God? How are we giving back to God? 
How are we using these gifts that he's given us to honor him? Or are we too self-absorbed with our own selves? Verse 14, And then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people of their deceitful schemes. And said, speaking the truth of love, we will grow to become in very respect the mature body of him who is the head. That is Christ. When we're talking about communication, this verse really, what it's talking about is there are people out there that are false teachers that will drag you away, that will make you honor and love the world, the job that the world has to offer, the games that the world has to offer, the iPads, the AirPods, the world has to offer. And it will track you away from what truly matters, which is Christ. And if we don't communicate with one another, if we don't hold each other accountable, if I don't sit there and say, yo, George, truth be told, you are made for so much more than just what you plan on doing. That's poor communication. If I don't sit there and say, hey, Arwen, you know what, this is what you're called to do. Hey, don't go in and do that. Hey, that's wrong. This is right. Then that's poor communication. These are the obstacles that hinder teamwork. These aren't scriptural like obstacles. These, these are from the world. This is what business has to teach you. These are the eight obstacles that will hinder you from any job. And the truth is that we have the answer in scripture on how to overcome these obstacles. How to defeat every obstacle in the name of the Lord. The world's problem is that we, we look at joining a team as a waste of our time. Like, I guarantee you all of us at one point or another have sat there and looked at whether it's, it's joining host or whether it's joining creative or whether it's joining drama. And, and you, you're sitting there like, well, no, I have school. That's more important. It's a man hour. Pause. Hey, mommy. That's my goddaughter. I really like your shirt. It's Baby Yoda. Anyways, the world's problem is that we look at joining teams as a waste of our time. Like, I will not join that team because I am too busy. I have better things to do. I don't have the time set for that. That or we don't even value your skills. What, what, what makes me the, the, the person to be on, on stage? What makes me the person to join drama? What makes me the person to click a button? I don't know how to do that. Or, or better yet, not understanding and truly understanding the purpose of why we do it. Like, why do we have a drama? Not to hate, that's my wife's ministry. But, like, why do we have a drama? Why do we have first impressions? I don't stand that. Like, isn't that too much? Is, isn't, isn't, like, why would you even do that? See, there's a purpose. There's a purpose for joining teams. And there's a purpose for every single team. I was going to do an analogy of what happens. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Oh, did you get it? Cool. I was going to do it in person, but I'm not going to do it in person. I'm just going to videotape that because it's difficult and I failed because I'm fat. Other than that, let's go ahead and play it. It doesn't matter about the sound. Oh, okay. The power of unity of working together. And this is Tristan. You're going to help me today, Tristan? All right, Tristan, what I'm going to have you do is down here we have a cup, all right? When I count to three, I want you to just stand up on top of that cup and just perch up there and smile for everybody. You ready? One. Here, I'll even help you. Two, three, go. No, no, no. Oh. You broke it. Oh, I see. I was fat. Some people, they they try this. They they think that they can do it all by themselves. I can do this by myself. And that's not true, is it? You need the help of a lot of people. And there's something called teamwork, 
or unity. That's amazing. And right here, Brother Logan, if you could shine it down here, we have teamwork. We have a bunch of working together. So what we're going to do is put this down right on top. And now we're going to see if a bunch of the same things. Now, are these any stronger than that other one that you saw? No, they're all the same. They're the exact same one. So we're going to see if we, we can just step up here. Go ahead and step right in the middle of that. And check that out. They're supporting Tristan's weight no problem because the power of unity. Because there's multiple people down there. Isn't that awesome? You feel like you're going to fall? No. Because people working together are much stronger than one person working by themselves. Opportunity clicks. Yeah. Guys, I tried that. It didn't work out. I tried it with like five different cups. Um, <laughs> your boy's fat. Okay, I just can't. Like, I weigh too much. The purpose of that video, the purpose of the illustration, is to showcase one and one thing only. We can't do life on our own. We can't do life on our own, let alone run a church on our own. I am blessed because I have so many people that are on teams. In fact, I'm going to do something. If you're on teams, can you raise your hand right now? Any team. If you're on any team, raise your hand. Guys, here's the truth. The only reason why youth survives is because you are a blessing to this ministry. Because you guys have sacrificed your time. You have sacrificed the, 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 the honor and gave it all to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says this. Chapter 12, verse 12. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, says this, The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us were Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some of us slaves, and some of us are free. But we have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share in the same spirit. Jumping ahead to verse 26, says this, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. See, we join teams to honor God. More than anything, that's the purpose. We join teams to honor God. Because we are all of the exact same spirit. We all want to give back to God. We all want to honor God. We, we want to give him the glory. As the band comes up, I'm going to go ahead and tackle those eight, those eight obstacles of teamwork. First one was being disconnected from the purpose. If you look at Ephesians 4, verse 12, it says that it's to build up the kingdom. See, our purpose on earth is to unify, to build up the kingdom of God. It's not to be disunified, but rather it's to unify together, to give back to God. What about unclear roles? If you look at verse 2, it's to be a servant. To understand that through humility and through love, we will find our roles. It's to love one another, to uplift, to edify. What about the lack of trust? Here's the thing, we don't place our trust in men. Like, have you ever stopped to realize that? How oftentimes we will place all of our trust in one person. That's why we call them, like, the best friend, our faves. Like, like, it's not about putting trust in a man, but rather putting trust in God. Knowing that no matter what happens with our team, no matter what happens, that it's him we are glorifying. No one else. What about number four? How about being different in capabilities and personalities? 
We can look at 1 Corinthians and still understand that we are many parts of one body. Even in verse 4, it says it again, that we are many parts but one body. It doesn't matter that we have capabilities or different personalities. Actually, that is going to give glory to God. When Corinthians is talking about it, it's saying that, that if you take out the eye, how do you expect to see? What about the ear? How do you expect to hear? We unify together as one body that we might glorify God in multiple avenues and in multiple strengths. The lack of vision, verse 13, is being in unison with Christ. To be able to sit there and, and, and unify ourselves with him, not the world. What about our low self-esteem in verse 7? Are we really finding value in what people have to say? Or are we finding value in him? Who placed value in us? Who gave us grace? Who gave us a second chance? Number seven, poor communication. Are we speaking in love intentionally? And A, unresolved conflict. Are we keeping the unity? Are we keeping the unity? All that to say, here's the point. We join teams that have worship for Christ. We join teams to honor and bring glory to Christ. We sacrifice our time, our skill set, to express how honored we are to be giving back to the Lord. The truth is that, died, uh, that Christ died for us and gave up his life for us. He gave up his, his life that we might have this second chance. And we serve him out of worship. We serve him to build up the kingdom of God. We serve him, we join teams to express to him how glorious he is. We join teams to thank him for everything he's done for us. And if you leave here today not getting anything I said, Understand this, worship, it's not just here singing along with songs. Worship, it's, it's not coming up and, and saying, oh God, you're great. Worship is so much more than that. And we join teams, we, 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 we work and we, we sit here and say, man, I'm gonna pick up that camera. Man, I'm going to get up on stage and, and help play games. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up a guitar or play piano because I'm giving back to God. I'm sitting there and saying, Lord, I'm going to worship you with these little fingers on a keystroke. I'm going to worship you with every gift that I have, with every fiber that I am, with all the passion that you've given me, I'm going to give back to you. The purpose of joining teams is not so that way we can sit there and gain some credible knowledge. Or so we can sit there and be on stage and be the person in front of the camera. But rather we join teams to give back to God. To give back to the kingdom of God. To use the skill sets he's given us to glorify his name and only his name. In just a few minutes, I'm going to dismiss you guys. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to join a team. I'm going to give you an opportunity to give back to God. I'm going to give you that opportunity to sit there and say, man, I'm going to use this passion that I've had since I was a kid to give back to the church, to give back to the community. But even before I do that, I want to pray over every single one of you. Because it's so easy, it's so easy to lose the vision. The vision of the church, the reason why you come here on Fridays, isn't to have fun. 
is to get closer with God. And although you might have fun, although you might get free pizza, although you might hear dope music from Christian artists, great. But the truth is, is you come here to get closer with Christ. You come here to understand who he truly is and how he truly values you. With that said, I'm going to ask with all heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to pray for you. Father, I just pray in this moment, Lord, more than anything that you give us, the ability to work as a team, as a unit, to glorify you and your kingdom. But above all, Lord, I pray that you give us the vision. You let us understand the purpose. You let us understand why we even come here on Friday nights. Lord, and that's to build up your kingdom, to get closer to who you are. So, Father, I pray in this moment that if one of us doesn't understand the point, that doesn't understand the point of coming to church, that doesn't understand the point of of joining a team, that doesn't understand the point of any of this, Father, that you just give them that purpose, that you give them that vision of the church, that you help them understand why we're here. It's ultimately to say thank you and to glorify you for everything you've given us. Lord, I pray over this congregation, this youth, that you just continue to edify us as a body, that you unify us as a team, and that you never let us waver from the true vision and true mission. I thank you so much for everything that you do. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen.